And then he became a copyist at the Louvre M Museum in Paris. If you've ever visited the Louvre, you've probably seen lots of young artists sitting there copying the work on the walls and drawing the sculpture. So people actually make a living doing that. And um, Degas did that for a while as well. His father, however, wanted him to go to law school and Degas being a very good son, enrolled in the Faculty of Law at the University of Paris in 1853, but fairly typical of other artists we've talked about, hated it and did not apply himself to his studies. In 1855, he had a pivotal moment in his life. He met the artist Angra, Jean-Auguste Dominique Angra. Angra was like the top artist of the day. And talk about the ability to draw. Angra is probably one of the greatest draftsmen in European art history. And Degas fell in love with Angra and his work. He was lucky enough to be taken under Angra's wing and he studied with him and one of his students, Louis Lamoth, at the Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Paris. And I highlighted and underlined, I put in bold, a quote that Degas received from Angra because it's important for us. And I'm gonna read it to you. Draw lines young man, and still more lines, both from life, this part I'm a little less excited about, both from life and from memory. I'm not crazy about you drawing from memory. I prefer that you draw from life. And you will become a good artist. I also, as Anger said, believe that drawing is the way to learn how to create. The more you draw, the easier it becomes and the better you get at it. So draw, 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 just like Anger said, I'm not the only one who says that. After studying with Anger, he went to Italy. He lived with an aunt in Naples and he copied the greats like Michelangelo, Raphael and Titian and all the other Renaissance artists. Um, he then came back to Paris, um, where he exhibited in many of the great art salons over the next five years. Unfortunately, in 1870, he went to war during the Franco-Prussian War and started having problems with his eyes. This became a lifelong thing for him. He always worried about his eyesight. After the war in 1872, he went to New Orleans in Louisiana and lived there for a while. His father died in 1873 and Degas was forced to return to Paris. It was the first time in his life that he was forced to make a living off of his own artwork. And this is when he created his best work in the decade beginning in 1874. This is when he met the Impressionists and he helped them exhibit in eight art shows. Even though he did not call himself an Impressionist, he was definitely part of the group. He also became wealthy enough that he started buying Impressionist work. He bought Manet, Cezanne, Gauguin, Van Gogh, Van Gogh, these are all people we recognize. He also bought Anger, Delacroix, and Daumier. He, as he advanced in years, he became more and more cranky and objectionable to be with. He distanced himself from his fellow artists. He had this really strange belief that a true artist didn't have time for friends. And could it be with other people? If you were truly a focused artist, being with others was a waste of time. And then um, there was quite a famous legal battle in France 
at that time called the Dreyfus Affair. And he, it was very controversial because there was someone in the case who was Jewish and Degas was incredibly anti-Semitic. So he alienated even more people with his anti-Semitism. He never married. He spent the last few years of his life very, very lonely, wandering the streets of Paris, nearly blind, and died in September 1917. So again, he Degas differs from the Impressionists because he did not like working plein air out of doors, but he did love the bright, dazzling colors that Impressionists used. He loved the effects of light that Impressionists studied. And he liked recreating the exact moment that he was looking at. That was something that he had a strong desire to do as did other Impressionists. And he, he one of his great quotes was, as with the Impressionists, he said, no art was ever less spontaneous than mine. What I do is the result of reflection and of the study of the great masters of inspiration, spontaneity, temperament, I know nothing. However, the images he created did show that momentary shift from one place to another. He became, I think this was interesting, he was a great friend of Marie Cassatz. They disagreed on just about everything, um, including feminism. And she was very upset by his anti-Semitism, but they became close good friends throughout both their lives. All right, so anybody have anything they wanna add or talk about? Degas? No? All right, let's start looking at his work. I'm gonna show you a few of his works in color, not too many, because today our main focus is on our drawing skills. I'm hoping that our model will be here momentarily. So we're gonna look mainly at his paintings and pastel works. And then we are going to look at a lot of his drawings and then we're gonna do our own. So first, here's one of his oils. Just opening it up. Maybe it is open. Yes. Okay. Oh, a little pixelated, so I'm going to reduce it in size. Folks at home, can you see the image? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's but small though. It is small and it's rather blurry. Is this a little better? Yes. Okay, good. So I'm loving this piece, not just because of the incredible realism in Degas' work. I'm sorry for those of you here, it's very pixelated, but I think the composition is incredible. Folks at home, I'm gonna shrink it in size just briefly so people here at the library can see how unbelievably realistic this image is. Even as you go further back in space, Degas was very faithful to detail. So the composition is amazing. Notice the way he creates that depth of field by making the dancer in the foreground in the front so big. She definitely is his focal point and she's really beautifully rendered. This is an oil. 
I failed to mention that Degas was also a photographer. Later in life, he became fascinated with photography, and this really honed his observational skills as well. Okay. So this piece, I think, is a pastel that I'm opening up. He's very famous for his pastels. Those of you who have pastels available to you and you're feeling up for working in pastels, I encourage you to do that today. So again, really wonderful composition. The fact that the dancer in the bottom left-hand corner is completely cut off. All you see is the bottom of her tutu forces us to look back in space. And the way he's put this leg and the arms directly pointing towards the upper right-hand corner of the image also is, I think, pure genius. It directs our eye back, back, back into the background of the painting. So that's how artists create depth of field and perspective. And then the lines, it's hard to see because the picture is a little blurry, but the lines of the floorboard, floorboards on the stage itself also help to create the perspective. Gorgeous color and texture. He knew his stuff. I'm gonna show you one more oil painting. I want those of you who possibly have never seen his work with horses before, I want you to get a chance to see one of his horse paintings. And then I'm gonna just show a whole lot of drawings and then we're gonna to go to work. Very tiny, I'm gonna enlarge it. So this is an oil. Even though Degas says the momentary was not anything he was interested in, look at this. To me, this really captures the moment of these horses coming together. They are all in complete movement. There's nothing static about this image at all, except for perhaps the buildings in the background. Again, this is just such a dynamic composition. The eye is taken from the bottom right-hand corner across the middle, and then all the way back to the steeple in the upper left. It's a beautiful piece. Is he aware of the, I'm sorry, the photographer who did the still of the horse's name? I don't know. Why can't I remember his name? But I know exactly who you're talking about. One of the earliest photographers, yeah, and videographers. I don't know. That's a good question. I think all the Impressionists probably were aware of that person. They were all fascinated by photography and Japanese art. That's a good one. For those of you who are really interested in the Impressionists, that would be a good one to research. All right, now I wanna show you some of his drawings because the man, I said this yesterday, the man could draw. He was incredible. And what he could do with just a few lines, 
was amazing. I don't know where to start. There are so many great day God drawings. Let's start with this one. Those of you who may know Angra, I should put his name, I'll put his name in the chat box. You can see the influence that Angra had on his work. Just, I think, magnificent drawing. His use of dark line to emphasize the figures, so beautiful. And he captures the delicacy of the, it's probably tulle fabric in their tutus, just with very few delicate lines, it's lovely. It probably is. So Teresa, I don't know if you folks at home heard, Teresa, she asked if this was charcoal, probably yes. I love the shadow underneath the foot here, the shading in the neck and the shoulder, this really rich dark line on the inner edge of her arm and leg. He virtually lived in dance studios. He loved looking at dancers in motion. It just was a thing. So this is probably charcoal and white Conti crayon or white pastel. This was probably a very quick sketch that he went back into and worked on. Really beautiful posture of the dancer. The way he's used the shading really helps him indicate that she's putting all of her weight on her left arm and left foot. It really helps to show the lean against, I think she's holding a bar, a dance bar. It really shows that she's leaning into the wall and the, the bar pole. Just beautiful. Okay, so now I this may be the last picture I show because I love this one so much. And Bill is not here yet, but I will model if Bill does not come. So we will be drawing from life today. Hope he's okay. This is very unlike him. So I wanna show you this. See if you can guess why. Why? <laughs> No guesses? Like, he erased. He erased. This is a drawing that proves 
Degas, as extraordinarily gifted as he was, sometimes didn't like what he made, didn't think it was good enough, made mistakes and erased, just like all of us. This is important for us all to know and see. Am I right? And still, I think this is a beautiful drawing. I think that the dark, heavy dark of the hats and the whiteness of the erasure, the contrast is pretty awesome. All right, but do you want to see one drawing of a horse? Because it's pretty awesome. And yes. then we're going to go to work. Because I could, I just could go on forever about and I'm going to put Angra's name in the chat box. So this is a day I got drawing of a horse that I think is pretty amazing. Looks like a photograph. It looks like a photograph. Looks like it could be an etching. Yay. Guess who just walked in the door? We were worried. Are you okay? Sure. Okay, good. <laughs> Welcome, Bill. Hi, everybody. Beautiful. Oh, is that a drawing? It is a drawing by Degas. Look, it actually looks like an etching, no? But it's a drawing. Perfect timing. So gather up your materials. I see many of you are already working. I'm impressed. Those of you who are here, there is a lot of paper. Do use the paper judiciously, guys, please. We ran out of paper last week. I don't want that to happen again. And, you know, if you take pencils, just return. So there's, oh, and I got brand new Conti crayons. If you have never worked with Conti Crayon before, it's great fun. So, and those of you at home, Conti Crayon, I'm gonna put this in the chat box also. Conti Crayon, C-O-N-T-E, crayons. Is that the same as oil pastels? No. So Conti Crayons, how can I describe them? They're little bit hard, but you can smudge them. You can get a sharp line if you use the edge of the Conti crayon, but you can also use them flat and get a nice soft quality, similar to soft pastels. They are not oily like oil pastel. If you have never used them, I recommend them highly. I might do a demo, quick demo of how to use Conti Crayons, Laura, okay. but maybe later on in the class, because I want people to warm up. All right, so I would recommend that you all take pencil to start with. We are going to start with our very rapid three minute poses. These will help you to see Bill in all his glory. Oh, and Angra, the other artist that if you are interested, I recommend you look up. Angra was a huge influence on Edgar Degas. And when you see Angra's drawings, woohoo! you are going to be blown out of the water. Yes. Did it go to everyone? Did everyone see Angra's name? I put it in the chat. Okay, good. 
allergies. You know, anger. There was a brilliant show of also of Degas at the Met a few years ago, just his drawings, and also a show of Angra's work at the Met a few years ago of his drawings. So I'm gonna enlarge. So everyone at home, we're gonna get books here in a few minutes. To gather up their materials. Should I turn the, go mute on this machine, right, Laura? Yes, go mute. Oh, no, leave yours on. You're okay, but you can hear you talk. Okay. I figured I'd give the first people at home a portrait face. One. So you want to turn this way? Yeah, you're going to turn towards Laura, like we did last week. Yeah, they'll see your face, not your back. So again, we're going to do rapid poses, quick gestural drawings, hold the pencil down by the eraser, think stick figure now. You're not looking for details in your work. You want to think about size and shape and volume. Okay, we can measure the figure by head lengths. We're not starting it. People are starting this. Not quite yet. Head length. Okay. One, two, three to the waist. Those are the things I want you to think about. One, two, um, I see three. if I can find some, maybe in the restroom, but I'll look. Arms and legs are long. Don't shortchange them on the arms and legs. Are we stopping now? I have to get the timer. Hmm. Can folks at home still see it? Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, look at where his right hand is compared to his right knee, to the knee and his right pinky are at the same level. His elbow is at his waist. Those kinds of relationships can help you see things. His left elbow, I think this is your waist still, a little bit above his waist. His hand is right at his touch, his left hand right here. Tilt to the shoulder, slight downward tilt. Look at the slant of his back. Very nice diagonal slant to his back. Try and do the whole figure. Don't worry about things like his mask or the plaid on his shirt. Keep it loose, loosey goosey. Don't worry about the drawing and how it looks now. This is not about making a good drawing. This is about warm up. Somebody needs to be in. No, I'm not. I'm not. I, I was committed. 
Do I have to run over there? Hey, Lauren. Is it Lauren? Lauren? I haven't seen Lauren in a while. Hey, Lauren, welcome. Is it you? Lauren or Dina, it's been a while. Can you ask the ideal height, like you don't want me to get higher, like picture was? This is like if I sit here and I don't stand, it's good. You're doing good. Wow. You do music? <laughs> All right, go, everybody. Okay, this beautiful pose, because of where his elbow and his hand, look at that, and where his hand is under his chin, where his elbows are next to his waist and hips, there are a lot of visual markers in this. We don't need to make the perfect drawing now. <laughs> Look at the curvature of his back. Beautiful. But Teresa and Tamara, you have the hardest job, but it's great. The more complicated it is for you, the more you're going to get warmed up. Mm -hmm. It's true. The, the quicker you will get into right brain thinking, the more you'll get into visual mode. Look less at your paper, more at Bill. Try and focus on Bill, not on his. Look at him. Okay? Look at him. I don't care what you put on the paper now. It really doesn't matter. You guys aren't seeing much, which is kind of cool. Just look at how long his back is. That's really an interesting challenge for guys on this side. One, two, three to his waist. So this is a very long sweep here. And you can use the edge of the shirt to determine the length. This is what Degas did. There would be a model where he'd sit in the, the dance studio and he would look, look and sketch over and over and over again, all day long, until he got it the way he liked it. He probably threw away millions of drawings. <laughs> Okay. Bill, yeah, you've got to come this way a little. Oh, well, this is good. Man. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pose that you're making is good. <laughs> yeah, you're, this is good. <laughs> I mean, the, the place you're in. Not that, are you actually going to sit like this for three minutes? No, it's different. It looks okay. It looks like it's good. Can you hold it for three minutes? Sure. Yeah, put your foot on the bench so people can see. Oh. All right. <laughs> it, yeah. felt good. it felt good to be in the motion. Yeah, your right arm's going to get tired. 
I just meant for the camera's sake, you need to see more of this stuff. Still one? Next no, one. no, this is this perfect. Is perfect. So you're right in the middle. All it's right. Perfect. All right. His, his shirt that he's holding in his hand is a good measuring stick. So you don't have to actually even draw it, but you can, the length of it kind of shows how long his torso is. And so half of the shirt, the halfway point of the shirt is that his kneecap. That might help you. His elbows are right at chest height. And his left hand is right at his hip. Forget about making a good drawing now. If you're still worried about making your drawing look realistic, then you're not warming up. Let go of that desire for perfection. Stop. Still a minute, Bill. And change. Okay, this is going to be the last three minutes. And begin. Look at the stretch of his neck. That might help you. The fact that his chest, his whole torso is pushed forward. It really elongates his arms. Remember, his arms are three, three and a half head lengths. Long. His torso is long. Is the length of his head. You can use the foot as a measuring tool. You folks have an interesting triangular negative shape on your side. Enlarge the foot. Curve at the back of his head and neck. Really nice, Sally. Good. Head. So his torso and his arms are pretty much the same length. That might help. You keep remembering that. Good. 
fucking so great when you look up at him. That's exactly what I want you to do. Excellent. Try not to look at your paper. Look at Bill. So we'll stretch for a minute and um so now we're going to move to five minute poses, everyone at home, which means you can start. You might have time to start adding details. And I do, I have a suggestion. I mean, Bill is a tall guy. You might want to turn your paper vertically. Don't look at Bill right now. Look at me. I'm going to run in front of the camera. Bill, relax for a second. Oh, keep that phone. Go back to that one. Come back to it. Everybody, look at me. Turn your paper vertically for this next drawing. Not horizontally. Do it vertical. All right. Bill? Yeah. Go for it. I don't know where I put my phone. Begin, everybody. Start with that loose gestural drawing. But five minutes means you have a little more time.
You have when you draw vertically, you have more room. Am I right? Yes. More room for mistakes. <laughs> yes. Actually, no, the larger you draw, the more room for error you have. That's a good thing. You want more room for error. People won't notice. Mm. <laughs> Liz, at some point, could you talk about foreshortening and explain a little bit about that? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so, for example, in this pose, depending on where you're sitting, the people on this side of the his foot here is foreshortened and his hand, which means, and his leg. The people on this side of Bill can't see his entire leg. So what artists do in this kind of situation is enlarge or exaggerate the size of the part of the figure that they can see. And that compensates for what you cannot see. Make the foot slightly bigger, but only draw the part of the leg that you can't see. Enlarge the hand a little bit. Does that help, Suzanne? I always turn and look at the TV. A little bit, a little bit. Yes? All right, so Bill, we're going to do another five minutes. So now you should start feeling a little bit more like you know where you're going with your work, hopefully. I do want you to start thinking about making a more finished image, but you're still really warming up. We're just really starting our practice today. <laughs> this is a great pose from Bill. Okay, begin. This is good. You know why this is good? Head lengths. You can really use this head as your measuring tool. So because the torso, the position that it's in, sunk in at the waist, it's going to appear shorter than when he's standing upright. Think about those kinds of things. Folks, on this side of Bill, you can use foreshortening. You can't see the top part of his legs, enlarge his kneecaps. Now, people on this side, you might want to turn your paper horizontally. Yes. People at home, I would keep your paper vertical. Try and start with the whole figure. Whole figure first. Don't worry about things on his face in the beginning. Try and get down where his arms and legs are. Yeah. 
Notice the tilt of his head over his right shoulder and the stretch of his neck. Don't forget the neck. What's the thing when I was a kid about this is the show where they had the no neck monster. <laughs> My father always used to tease me and call me the no neck monster. That's from Tennessee Williams, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Liz. Um, that is to say, and I do. You are my literary genius. Uh, I do. You would remember. Right. The Big Daddy, right? You, you got it. Little No Neck Monsters. <laughs> That's when my father. Either he was angry at me or he was teasing me. That's what he would call me. Was he an artist? No. <laughs> no, my uncle was a really good artist. Mm -hmm. His brother. No, my father was a scientist. He appreciated art. Hansi Grand is a cat on a hut and we're going to be good. Can't get away from Tennessee Williams. What's going on? It's because we're in the library. We have 20 seconds still. That's why we're so comfy, though. No, it's difficult. It's a very hard. You're doing good. Mm. All right. So, what time is it? Um, so that, you know, this is the part I can't decide. So, was that our second five minute quotes or our first? Second. We're going to do one more five minute pose. Folks, and then we're going to switch to doing some longer. <coughs> Start with the whole figure. Try and get it down from head to toe. Then go back for the details. That's the hardest part for me to help you understand. If I can help you understand that part, the battle is over. Get it down quick. Again, even if it's just a stick figure for starters, that's okay because you're going to go back and fill in. Oh, turn up the TV. Oh, so mom, we're going to turn up the TV screen because nobody needs it. It's going to make it easier for you to see Bill. 
and people here, you don't have that distraction anymore. Right. Now you can really focus on Bill. Mm -hmm. Better, right? Yes. When it's time for sharing, we'll turn the TV back on. Folks at home, you can still see Bill, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. But the good news is the next post is going to be a 10 minute one. Day. All right. right knee is under his right elbow. 
confusing what I just said. Let me show you. Hardest is Sally. Sally, you got it rough. It's challenging for you. You can do it. Look at this relationship. It's elbow to the heel of his foot here. This side. And you guys on this side, you've got the elbow to the waist relationship here. That'll help you with the length. See how long his arms are? Everybody's arms. Really long. It's incredible. I don't know why we draw the arms and legs so short. They're not. Okay, so this is 10 minutes. As always, I recommend you start with the full figure, very light pencil, quick sketch. Then you can go back in and make corrections and add details. And that's just going to feel like eons now. Yes, Al's really good at holding pencil loosely. Trying to get his whole body in there. Get out. The right knee is higher than the left. At this point, you don't want to draw every finger of every hand. You just want to position where the hands are. How long his hands are, though, the reach of his fingertips almost to his elbows. That's an interesting juxtaposition. The length of his feet. If his right foot goes all the way, his heel starts at his hand and goes all the way longer than to his kneecap. It extends past his kneecap. So interesting. It's difficult, but the harder the pose, the more you're going to learn. The more you're going to understand about the proportions of the human body. It's true about a lot of things in life. The more difficult it is to achieve, the more you learn through the process of doing it. Very good. I want to just see what the book is showing
Just don't worry about it. If you find yourself obsessing about just one part of the picture, stop and move to another part. Does that make sense? You have 10 minutes. You can always go back to the part that's giving you problems. Give yourself a break. If one part of the picture is giving you a headache, let it go. Come back to it later. Um, so guys at home, before we start the next part, Bill, yeah. I want to talk to folks at home. I've been really giving the people here a lot of attention. Is there anyone at home who needs assistance? Where can I see them? Oh, you can't see them. And how do I do that? I don't want to push the wrong button. Oh, I can see them here on my laptop. 
So we don't have to turn the TV on. It is Lauren. Lauren, welcome. Okay, so Lauren, why don't why don't why don't why Lauren, you can unmute and put your picture up to the screen. Let me see if I can Sorry, I've spotlight got this, you. I've got a whole bunch of little sketches on this one page, but my question is about the foreshortening. I'm having trouble in terms of yeah, yeah everybody's cutting cutting the library. Watch. Oh wait, we got to put you on the TV. Um, so we're working no, on. Let's this. not put this up on the TV. <laughs> yes. You're helping all of us. Lauren, first thing I want to say, first of all, you look fabulous. Welcome oh, back. Thank you. Second, Good to hear. second of all, can you try and work larger? Yes. You, you've got Bill all scrunched up into the corner of the page. I do. I was running out of space. I. I was having also trouble with the, and I don't know if you can see this, but with the pose where he was leaning back. Right. With and I'm going to tell you, part of your problem is because you're working in such tiny space. Okay. So I would prefer seeing you working bigger, even if you have to draw on top of what you're doing. Okay. okay. I think that's why you're having difficulties with the foreshortening because you squoze in everything into such tiny space. Okay. All right. I wanted to also say, I tried to do this one. Yes. Also working with the foreshortening. It's a little bit of a different angle, but this is. Right. And see you drawn, you've expanded the image to fill the whole page. You're having way more success. Okay. So it's gonna help you to enlarge your sketches. That's what okay. I need to do. So space, check, got it. <laughs> it's it, it that much that doesn't help. We're gonna think of something else. You look fantastic. So great Thank to you. see you. Thank you so much. It's good to be so here. Well. All right, anyone else at home? Suzanne, we're gonna spotlight you. Those of you here can draw Bill. Bill Let's do that. Or you can watch the drawings at home. You have a choice. You can watch me talking to people at home or you can. I don't know if you can, you can see. Bill, you don't even have to pose. You can you can okay All right, Sam, we're looking at your drawing. So Suzanne, for you, this is drawing big, right? Bigger than usual. No, actually, I, I like I like drawing big, actually. I mean, when I, Go. it just depends, it depends. So tell us about this. Well, it's hard to tell, I'm just very slow. So um, I, I think I didn't get enough of the foreshortening over here, probably of the legs. It's kind of hard yeah. for us to see because you're not, it's not, it's no, not, that's right. not, it's not a problem. It's because you're, it's a work in progress. Right. Um, my one, my one uh, piece of advice for this picture, yeah. I feel as if the forearms are a little bit short. That's, okay. Or maybe it's, from the shoulder to the elbow needs to be lengthened. From the shoulder to the elbow, okay, got it. The one on the left, his left side, the right side of the drawing is, yeah. no, the other side. Yeah. yeah, that one seems good. It's the one on the other side that seems a bit short. And I think that's gonna lengthen and then force you to lengthen this side from the elbow to the tips of his fingers. Okay, got it. 
And then this is a really, this is what was a quick one. This was a small one here. Yeah, these are your three minutes. They look great. Um, yeah. There, and then this was another quickie. Yeah, they look great. It's hard to tell because I it's I'm not growing darkly and it's it doesn't come through. So it's 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 hard. No, I think you're do, doing great. And I think this last one that you worked on is really you got something going on there. So I would go back to it and continue. But I can't do it without the model. There's no way I can do it. Do you right. know what I mean? I, I, I need to, I should have taken a picture. I didn't, but that would have helped. Yeah. Next time I'll take a photo. Well, is that all right, Bill? Is that okay, Bill? He said yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks. So we're going to share, share at the end. If there's anyone else who's having a problem at the moment that you need advice on at home. Otherwise, we're going to share at the end. Nobody? All right. So, Bill, yeah. let's do a 15-minute baby. That'll bring us up to sharing time. So we're gonna do a really extended pose now, everyone. Bill's gonna get comfy. I have to remove me from the spotlight, good. Okay, thank you. Lauren, your hand is still up, are you okay? Yes, I'm good, I'll put it down. Sorry, I didn't notice. I Not a problem. All right, this, everybody, is a fantastic pose. Look at how long his left arm is. Oh, this is so great for measuring. Oh, let me put the timer on first, and then I'm going to give you some pointers. This is going to be our last drawing of the day. Unfortunately. Begin, everybody. Begin. One, two, three head lengths for the arm. Beautiful sweep. Here. Look at the curve of his back. It's almost like a U shape here. Look at how long his hand is. Same size as your face. So the length. Bottom half of his leg is the same as the length from the shoulder to the elbow. Let me show that again. And the knee to the ankle, same as the shoulder to the elbow. You can really see that in this pose, right, Sally? Liz, I have a question with the hand that's on, that you said that's on the foot. Does you said that's the same size as the face? So is that hand foreshortened or do you make that hand bigger? I'm confused. I think from where you're looking, if you enlarge the front of his fingers, that will look good. So foreshorten it, yes. You guys on this side, use those head lengths. It's 
Does he have the hand? It's he sizes the face. Are we okay doing it? Then? Oh, you're moved on to different color. Okay. Yeah, look at where his elbows are, everybody. So his right elbow is right at chest height, the elbow that's on the stool, right at chest, well, maybe a little bit lower than chest height, right in the middle of his torso. That'll help. And then his left elbow is right at his hip. That will help you see how long the upper length of the arm is. Boy, this is a great learning pose, Bill. This is awesome. Set the timer. What time is it, please? Um, 
See this? Yeah, isn't that cool? If you can draw this, you call this the negative shape. You can draw that. It'll help you see how long his arm is here. So his fingertips are right at the edge of his stock on his right arm. That'll help you see how long his arm and leg are. Three more minutes still. Oh, I never put it with the demo. Sure, you can see more of the back. That, that's what you need. That'll really help you. One more minute, everybody.
Okay, guys. Last week it was people at home went first. Am I correct? It's always correct. I'm always correct. And remember, at sharing time, it's not about criticism, it's about helping each other. So if you show your work to others, they're going to give you advice. We said you want to go first. Sure. You want to go? It's up to you. Yes. So, so Teresa, do you want me to hold it while you talk about it? Yes. Folks at home, Teresa's going to go first. So Teresa is drawing her granddaughter. Folks at home, can you see? Oh, wow. Granddaughter. Cool. 16, Teresa picked that. She wow. was 10 years old. Oh, I think so. Wait, hold on. Okay. Wow. So here she was using a photograph of her granddaughter. Here is the drawing. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for Teresa because she can work for small, which I cannot do. Her style is tiny. And speaking of tiny, the mini art show is on display here at the library on the first floor. And many of us are in that show. So I invite everyone to show us some. Yeah. All right. So kudos to Teresa. She's working on accuracy. Well done. Yay, Teresa. Thank you. Mara is next. Different. Okay, Tamara, can I point out my favorite one tomorrow? Mm. Oh, wow. This one, Tamara really got the gesture of the pose mm. down so well. She builds torso was twisted such an interesting way from where Tamara was sitting, and she mm. really captured her, and it was difficult. Yeah, that she did well. The proportions are, are very accurate. Well done. Smart also works small. Right, tomorrow. Thank oh. you. It's frustrating for me because I can't see it. This one, right? I don't like this. So Alice did great. This is Alice's final drawing, and she really did great today. Go down a little list. Go down a little image. Oh, I love it. Alice's personality and style always shines through in her work. Alice is just terrific. Just terrific. Very New York, New Yorker. I love it. Yes. Yes. I love even the objects of the props, the chair and the stool. Okay. This is Alice. Alice 
let's grab a The pat was using Conti Graham. I failed to do a demo today, maybe next week. Conti Graham does come in lots of different colors, and you can see that you can get a hard, fine edge with the Conti Graham as well as a softer, almost pastel y effect. Beautiful. I love all the things she leaves out. Yes. <laughs> no, but it's interesting the way the brain fills in what's missing. You don't have to put every single line in every single drawing. Even the hair on top of the hair. Yeah. Over here. All you need is a suggestion sometimes to create a very dynamic. So you did the gestural, the quick gestural drawing first in yellow, and then you went over it with blue. You went back in to do your details and corrections with blue. Nice. He has multiple drawings. I love. <laughs> so this is Essie's final. Is it low enough? You can see it. Yes. I love Essie's technique. Lots of very, very. I love the squiggly. Lines, all the motion she gets into her work. Really like the texture of that. Do you know whose work that reminds me of Alberto Giacometti? Do you know him? Yeah, that's a compliment. The <clears throat> Bill is saying Esty's work reminds him of Giacometti, great Italian sculptor. Mm -hmm. It's true, so he had a lot of beautiful. You would have been a great model for the shop. You know? We got, got the Jacob in the body. Yes, I want to show you work. I'm so proud of what you've done today. No. All right, maybe next time. Not going to force you, but you did great today. Yeah, if you don't want to share, I'm not going to force you, but your work is worthy of being looked at. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I missed you, Charlie. I'm coming back. So this is Heather's. Heather's is so powerful. Yeah. Love the colors. Yeah. So again, the yeah. personality really comes through in her work. What I love the most about Heather's drawing. Really beautiful, I think. But Shirley was in hiding. <laughs> you were in hiding over here. <laughs> Which one do you want me to show then? I don't I don't this one. Let's look at your finish. These are her final sketches. <laughs> <laughs> great. These are great. <laughs> so Shirley is always trying for precision and accuracy. And 
first. Doris, you want to share today? Yes. And Doris, you have to unmute. Wow, this is great. Awesome. Oh, okay. How is it working from home? You can see Bill accurately, you think? Yes. Yeah, working from home is fine. I can see well. The only thing, I struggle with the short poses. I feel like I want everything to be like a half an hour. <laughs> well, but that's okay. That's and then one, short of, one of the other ones I did was are for warm up. Yeah. Yeah, these are great. Great, great, great. I I love them. You're getting the proportions down really, really well. So kudos, awesome. Thank you. Yay, thanks for sharing. And oh, are there other people left or did they all go? Oh, Margo is next. Yay, Margo. Thanks, Doris. Oh, wow, Margo is drawing big. Woo! This, I know, it's a departure for you, Margo. This is great. Look how good. I like how you're using dark and light, and light lines both. Well done. Well done. Excellent. Oh. Oh, this is, I asked you to show this to us. Yes. Beautiful. This is watercolor, correct? Yes. And I, is it Portofino? You're muted. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah, I can't seem to unmute you, Margo. I don't know why. You did unmute me. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes, yes. This is at the Italy coast, any coast on Italy, and it's watercolor, and uh, I couldn't unmute when I was spotlighted for some reason. It's really beautiful. The colors are, are wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the comments on my sketch. <laughs> Needs work. <laughs> Hey, we, all of us need work and practice. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Lizzie, oh, Lizzie, I didn't even know you were here today. Awesome. I came late. <laughs> Thank you, Margo. I'm going to spotlight Lizzie. Oh. And Lizzie, mm -hmm. you're not often on camera, so this is exciting. Oh. There you are. Did you uh, do it? First of all, thank you to the model because those were crazy poses. <laughs> He's a great model, our Bill. Oh my, so many angles. Um, so I'm out of practice, but this was 
the next to the last, I don't know how many minutes. Well done. It's really nice. Um, and then the last one, I'm not fast. That's, I think, my big problem was this. I didn't Liz get to his lower body. None of us are. <laughs> Lizzie, being fast is not important. Everyone works at their own speed and in their own style. Some artists are slow and careful and some are fast. So having speed in your work is not an advantage, okay? Yeah. Degas, Degas worked on one painting for eight years. Oh, I don't think I have that attention level. Haha. <laughs> well, he didn't work on it nonstop, but it took him eight years to complete. Holy moly. So, I do find, um, and it's not a comment on the need to wear a mask, but having the mask does throw me off too. Proportion, like where to put the head tilt or whatever. Yes. Mm. yes. So I guess it adds a new challenge. <laughs> I really love this drawing because of your use of dark lines and you're starting to work on the shading. It's really, really effective. And very strong, Lizzie. This is a terrific drawing. Thanks. And uh, thank you again for doing this class. Our pleasure. All right, anyone else in the home viewing? Did Suzanne have to go? All right. And Lauren, I guess, had to go. All right, so our next artist, I have to look up. Oh, it's it's 12.02. Oh, Lauren is here. Lauren, do you want to quickly share? Sure. Um, I kind of did an earlier pose. I just finished it, but I'm having trouble. Oh, with wow. See what drawing large will do for you? <laughs> um, terrific, Lauren. Thank you. I, um, yeah, it's much easier with a lot of space. Yeah. I'm, I'm having some trouble with hands and also, I mean, obviously the foreshortening, but here and then the legs, but um, what do you think? I think it's fabulous. And I think the hands are the last thing you should be worried about at this stage, okay? Okay. Awesome. Those kinds of details come later. You're doing great. Thank Ooh, I'm you. so glad you're back. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right. Well, folks are leaving. So I guess adios, everyone. A biento, I should say. We're doing friends. I will see you all next week. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think it's our final French speaking artist. Well done, everybody. You did great. Thanks, Bye-bye. Bye, everybody Bye. at home. Thank you. Thank you, Bill.